Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial in which I'm going to be showing you how you can use the Axios API to send form data in JavaScript. So Axios is a third party library for making HTTP requests. Under the hood, it uses Ajax or the XML HTTP requests object and it's promise based. The main advantage of using Axios is that it has a very simple syntax, even simpler than the fetch API. So in case you're not already familiar with Axios, I did make a video showing you how to make get, post, put and delete requests using it. So if you're not familiar, you might want to check that out before continuing. In this video, we're going to be focusing on sending form data in the form of a post request. OK, so to install Axios, you can install it from the command line using npm by writing npm install Axios. If you do want to do it that way, Axios has an official npm page where there are detailed instructions on how you can install Axios locally. But in this tutorial, just to get up and running really quickly, I'm going to be using a CDN link, posting that in the head of my HTML document, and then the Axios library will be available in my script. Now, I did test before this tutorial the JS Deliver CDN here. This doesn't seem to be working. This is probably just a temporary problem. But so for this tutorial, I'm going to be using this unpackaged CDN here. So in my document, I'm going to paste that in the head of my document. OK, so this is the form element that I'm going to be posting in this tutorial. It has three input elements, two of type text and one is of type file. So I'll be showing you how you can post not only text data, as in the value that the user enters, but also a file and in this case it's going to be of type image but it could be any other type of file and if you're creating a form don't forget to include the type attribute and set that to submit so that when the user clicks the button it will trigger a submit event on the entire form okay so let's move on to the JavaScript now and how we can get this data out of the form once it's completed and send it to a HTTP endpoint so the first thing you want to do, of course, I'll just move this up a little bit, is to select the form. So I'll select that by its ID, which is form. OK, now what I'm going to do is add an event listener to the form. And I want to listen out for a submit event. Now, the submit event is occurring when the user clicks the button, not on the form. And that's occurring because the button has the type submit there. So I'm listening out for this submit event on the form. And when that occurs, it's going to fire this associated function. Now, the very first thing I want to do is to make sure that the form is not submitted automatically by HTML, because this will refresh the page. And I want to control the submission process in JavaScript. So the way that I can prevent that is on the available event object that I have here, I say E prevent default so this is preventing the default behavior of HTML submitting the form okay so what you want to do next is to take the data that is available in the form and store it in a form data object so the form data object it's a native object in JavaScript and to create a new one you use the new operator before it and that's going to return an object instance of form data, and I'm going to save a reference to that. That's going to be form data. Now, the reason you're going to want to use a form data object is because if you store the data available in a form in a form data object, then when you make a post request with the payload, so the form data, the headers and the encoding are going to be set for you. So you don't have to do much manually at all. So it's a good idea to store the data inside a form data object, which is just kind of like a container for data available in a form. You can put other kinds of data in there, but it's really designed for form data especially. Now, an easy way to put all of your form data inside a form data object in one go is to pass in the form inside form data when you're creating it. Now, all of your data from that form will be stored in this reference form data. Now, if you want to see the contents of a form data object, you can log it to the console in the following way. You create an array 
and use the spread operator to spread the contents of the form data object into that array. Now we should be able to see what's been stored inside the form data object in the console. So I need to click submit here just to see that. And you see there's three arrays inside here and we have first name, last name and photo. So there's nothing in first name at the moment or last name or photo. So if I just write Brad Pitt here and I submit, you'll see that this data is now being stored inside the form data object. And notice that it's being stored in key value format. Now there's a little bit of a gotcha to the method I just showed you. If I delete the name from one of these inputs, so I'll just delete last name and we try that again. So I'll just use the same name again. You'll see that there's only two bits of data there now, first name and the photo. So if the input element doesn't have a name, it's not going to be stored in the form data object if you pass it in like we did here with new form data and the form in parentheses. So an alternative way that you can store data inside the form data object is to append it on an individual basis. So if I say here form data dot append. Now remember it's in key value format. So the first bit of information you need to enter here is the key you want to save something under. So I removed the last name from the name from the input attribute, so that wasn't there. Now what I need to do is to insert the value for what I'm appending here. So I want this to be, let's have a look at the ID. So the ID is last name. So I can say document.getElementById and it's last name and then the value should go there. So even though there's not a name there, now on the input element, it should now be working. So I'll input the same data as before. And you can see that last name is there now. So I appended it and it's now on that object. You can see it's in a different order now because the first two were added when I created the form data object and last name is now last because that was appended afterwards. So in this way, if you wanted to, you could add data that's not even in the form to the form data object. So you could say, for example, form data dot append. So I'll just say my D here and I'll enter a number there. Now, when I go back to the form, you see now that data that wasn't even in the form is in the form data object. So this append method gives you some flexibility in terms of adding data that wasn't even in the form in the first place. Okay, so now for the posting of the form data using Axios. So I have available to me Axios because I included the CDN link in the head of my document. And I'm going to be calling the post method because I want to post this form data. Now you need to enter two bits of information here. The first one is the URL endpoint where you're sending the data to, and the second is the payload. So we already have the payload, that's form data. Now the endpoint I'm going to be using in this example is a test endpoint that you can also use. It's called httpbin.org, and I want to make a post request. So what this is going to do is it's going to send back the request I sent to me so I can see what it looked like to the server. So this is a nice way of making HTTP requests and getting some diagnostic information back. Okay, now we're ready to handle the result of this post request. So Axios is promise based. If it's successful, then it's going to fire the then method. Inside the then method as a parameter, you have available to you res. So this is going to be the response if it's successful and we can use it inside this function here. So I'm gonna console log res if it's successful. If it's not successful for some reason, then the catch statement will be triggered and I'll log the error in case there is one as well. 
Okay, so let's see if it's working now in the browser. So I'll enter my text data here. And I'm also going to include a file this time. And those will be attached to the form data object and I send it. And you can see I get the response from the server, status 200, letting me know that the post request was successful. If I look here, it's sending back what I sent to it. So you can see the form, the data that I sent. So it included Brad, first name, the ID, the last name, and it also contains the file, the photo that I sent. Now also, if we take a look at the headers, you see that these were set for me. So if you weren't using a form data object, you would have to set some of this manually, but using the form data object, content type was set to multi-part form data and accepting application JSON and text planes. So this is the reason why it's really useful to use a form data object. Now, just finally, I'm using promises syntax in my code here, but you might want to use the more modern version async await. So you can easily change this to async await by using the async keyword before the function that's going to be called when the form is submitted. Now, what you do down here is you use await before Axios, and that's going to wait for the response to come back from the server. And that's going to be saved in result. And then you can just console log result. So this would work, but what about the error? So the way that you handle that is you do what you're attempting inside a try statement. So I just copy and paste that in. And then it's followed by a catch statement where you have available to you as a parameter the error. And you can log the error to the console. So it's like then and catch, but in this case, try. You're going to try this first, and then the catch statement is going to be triggered if it doesn't work out. So exactly the same result should be produced here. I'm just using async await syntax, which is just an alternative syntax for handling promises. So if I submit that, you see again, I get the same result back with the data, including the file and the form. So that is how you can post form data using the Axios API for JavaScript. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.